All right, welcome back to MacBook Lessons number two, a lesson a day made easy for you on Facebook. We are going to be talking today about your dock. So, in the MacBook, you have a dock at the bottom of your screen. That dock can actually hide or it can stand on the front of the screen as I showed you yesterday on lesson number one. If I right click right here on the line, you'll see turn hiding off. So when I'm away from the dock, it actually stays stagnant and does not hide behind the bottom of the, uh, the horizon. However, when you're in a program and the window's open, sometimes if you're in the bottom corner of the window, maybe trying to maximize the window or something, you may bump onto, the, onto one of these programs on accident. So a lot of times I just like to hide it so it's not in the way of what I'm doing. So I'll turn hiding back on. I'm going to right click again. I'm just showing you a couple features down here that are available. I can actually turn magnification on right here and what that does is allows me to see all of the different applications I have access to in a bigger view so that I can find them easier. I can again right click right there and turn them off. I'm going to right click and show you position on screen. So you can position this dock on the left or right side of your screen and I'll show you one real quick what it looks like. And you'll notice I have it hidden but if I come and hover over this left side it comes right back out. I'm going to move it back. I'm going to turn hiding off and I'm going to move it back to the bottom of the screen. The next thing is the minimize using. So if I have an application open and I am using the scaled effect. So let's open an application real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up this calendar real quick. If I use the scaled effect, what happens when I minimize this, which is the yellow button, as it is on most computers, we're going to minimize it and it just scales it down and puts it on the right side of this uh, street or dash line usually. And if I click on it again, it, it scales it back up. However, if I change that to be a genie effect and I minimize it, it looks like it's going into a bottle, like a genie in a bottle. So again, one more thing I want to show you about this. The green, it's important to know when you are maximizing your window. Maximize, does, maximize doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fill the whole window. It actually means it's going to be large enough so that everything on that window can be seen within, uh, within the screen. So right now, if I click Maximize, this one will actually get bigger. However, most programs will get just big enough so that everything fits inside. You can always drag the sides of your windows to stretch the full screen though. So the last thing is this Close button. One of the things that's important to know about closing your documents on Mac is that once you close it, if you click this red X, it doesn't actually close the program. And the reason I know that is because right up here at the top, you'll still see the calendar. That means the calendar is still open. The only way I can close this is by going down and hitting Quick Calendar. Now there are a couple of programs, very few, that will actually close. For instance, if you do that with the Finder, the Finder will close. iPhoto will actually close as well. But uh, to see what's open, you can hit Command Tab and you can actually see the items that are open on your MacBook. Now sometimes you might notice that as you're working things get really slow and if you hit that command tab at the same time you hold down the command and then press the tab button and you can tab while holding down the command you can tab through those buttons. You'll notice that when you do that you may have quite a few open you didn't even know were open. And it's just a quick way to check what's open and what you can close. So whatever I landed on, which I landed on Safari, I can come up here and I can quit Safari very quickly and it will actually close it and now when I command tab, you no longer see Safari. Finder always stays open, you can't close it. So again, let's go back down to our system preferences, which we talked about yesterday. You can find the system preferences down here or you can find it up under the Apple. So we're going to open system preferences. And I want you to see that there is, under the personal column, there is, uh, excuse me, row, there's a button for the dock. And if I click on that, I can actually make the size of my icons bigger and smaller. 
You'll notice they get a little bit smaller as I go down. So if you have a lot of programs on the dock, you can actually make it bigger and smaller so you can fit more programs on. That magnification I showed you by right clicking on the dashed line down here, that actually is also in here. So I can click on it or uncheck it right there. I can magnet if I have magnify and I don't want it to magnify a lot, just a little bit, I can actually move that down so it only does it a little bit. Just help help me see a little bit better. I can position the screen on the screen just like before, the left, right, or bottom. I can change the genie effect or the scale effect. I can double click a Windows title bar to minimize it. I can minimize windows into an application. I can animate the opening of applications. So if I animate it, I just wanted to show you, it will actually bounce in the dock. If I don't like the bouncing, I can turn that off. Here's another place you can automatically hide and show your dock. And you can show indicator lights for open applications. So you'll notice that I have QuickTime open. There's a little blue dot down here. I have System Preferences open, the little blue dot, and I have Finder open. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And that just lets you know from a quick, quick view what, what's available, or what's open already. So that's the dock. One more thing I wanted to show you, though, is when the dock is, and I'm going to go ahead and close that, if you have the finder open, let's say you have, we can come over here to applications. If you have an application that you really like and you want it easily accessible in your dock, you can actually hold this down with one finger and drag it down into your dock. And I always say wait till the water's part. Do you see that? When the water's part, you can let go of it and it'll actually stay in there. Now, if at some point I don't want that in there anymore, I can actually hold it, move it with the other finger right out and when you see the little cloud show up you can let go and it'll disappear. Now you noticed another way when that menu just popped up another way you can close things and we'll come over here and, and do that on well, let's open the calendar again. The When the blue light is open if I hold my finger down on here it actually gives me an option to quit that program right there as well. So another place you can go quit your program. And that's basically it about the dock. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions, please feel free to post it in the Facebook responses. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. And thank you again for joining us.